Hi, my name is Hannah Chapman and I work as a promoter for uh, one of the world's leading music companies. So I promote gigs and tours, so we basically um, when a band wants to go on tour, their agent will contact us and we will put together the show um, and they we kind of we do all the work to see it through to the end, um, working alongside the agent, the band, and uh, the management company, as well as the production side of everything with the venues. Well, beforehand, I was working as tour manager um, for a band, so I was travelling around uh, Europe and the UK, managing the tours that we were on, but. I found that I wanted to be more office-based, so um, I found this role through other people within the industry, and that's how I kind of got into it. My skills from my tour management definitely helped um, to understand how the music industry worked as a whole. Um, also, it made sure that I had a lot of contacts already, so when it came to Getting into this new role, I already knew a lot of people um, and had relationships that I could continue to build. And also knowing how it worked from the band's point of view um, was really helpful um, because as a promoter, you don't always see it from their point of view. So it's quite, it's quite good to have that sort of um, knowledge of the different areas of the industry. Um, when I first left uni, I got a job as a model agent booker, um, which I did for about two years, um, which actually is quite similar to the role I have now, which is getting jobs for bands, but before it was getting jobs for models, working on shoots, um, which, yeah, it's the same skill set, but in a different area. So I went from fashion to uh, music. And then from there I left and started doing the freelancing with the tour managing and um, just working on shows, doing production. And then that sort of led me into the role I've got now. Um, a typical day, we usually will get um, an email from the agent who is looking after the band with what they are looking for for a tour. So it might be um, they want to do London with two regionals and these are the preferred venues. We would go and source availabilities from those venues and costs. We put together an offer and we send over the availability and the cost cost to the um, agent who will then say this state works we prefer this venue or we'd like to get more money out of this one so we go back and tweak with the costs um, until we get get to where they would like for the act and um, then we kind of work on the next stages which is like the marketing and ticketing for each show um, so we have to work directly with our marketing in-house marketing team and our in-house ticketing team. And the most satisfying part of my job is when you've worked on something for a long time and it finally comes together and you get to see the show um, and you see everyone's reaction and how um, excited all the fans are. The band are like really happy afterwards. Especially if you've done a sold out show, that feels really great because um, you're like, I was part of that. Um, so, yeah, I would say like the final product is for me the best part of my job, I think, is seeing everyone really excited and feeling like they just want to do it again, and then we go out and we do it again. So, when I was younger, I always wanted to work in music, but I have no musical skills or talents, so. Um, I didn't know that there was this whole world of music that you could work in if you aren't talented in that way. So it kind of just 
was in the back of my head, like, I can't play music, so I just can't do anything in there. Um, but when I um, was working at the modelling agency, I started to meet people who worked in um, media, like editing, working for magazines and stuff, and, and they had friends that worked in music, and I met some bands, and then I met their tour managers, and I kind of started realising that there was all these opportunities that you didn't have to be good at music or be able to play an instrument or sing or any of that stuff to actually work in music. And I started doing my research and I was like, wow, there's a lot of jobs out there um, that you can go for. So I just kind of like found, I actually found um, the course that was like a tour management course. It's like a two month um, course within, within a music um, company, they had a rehearsal studio space and so then they had people teaching. Also at their ACM in Guildford they do musical teaching stuff, um, which I again thought was just music based and it's not, there's other other stuff. So yeah, it kind of opened up a whole world of like, wow, there's all these other jobs out there that you can uh, definitely go into with without having any musical talents. Before I started out, I wish I knew that, I wish I knew that there was this whole world of opportunity out there for me. I wish someone had said, like, you wanna work in music? You can do that. You don't need to have a musical talent. You don't need to be good at singing. There's other options out there for you. Um, I just, yeah, I just wish someone had given me the opportunity to see what was out there and sort of explain explain the different roles and sort of give me a better idea of what is out there because there is so much and there's so much you can do and get into and different skill sets that you can have for these different roles and yeah, none of them involve me playing music, singing or like even having to touch an instrument. <laughs> when I was tour manager, I'd say there would, yes, in terms of learning like the technical terms of stuff and, you know, and even in, when I worked in production, learning the different, you know, types of instruments, the mics, the wiring, the, the you need basic techie experience, but you can definitely learn that from just you know asking someone at a venue can I shadow you um, can I help out for free and you know sort of tag on to shows and there's definitely some skills that you'll need but you can get them easily the job I'm in now um, you, you got to be organized and definitely a people person there's a lot of relationships that you have to build and grow um, so yeah definitely being able to uh, develop relationships but I think that's just like a natural people skill that you might have and you don't really need to learn that um, what else being good at Excel is definitely definitely a good one um, but no I think you can learn along the way you just got to have the passion to want to do it I think you should just, if it's something you want to do, just put yourself out there, try and get building, networking relationships with people, whether it's, like I say, go to a venue, ask if you can shadow people that work there, um, try and get internships, maybe if you get, you know, you know a band and you help them out with some stuff, like, at practice or like it you know it just kind of like put yourself out there into the world that you want to be in and learn what you can and then yeah just keep pushing I think keep going for it and it will come eventually it's a lot of hard work but we get there in the end um, at school I was a 
I think I was a bit of a geek. I like to be on time for lessons. My friends used to make fun of me. Because um, we're like, we're late. I hate being late, and I think that's uh, a good a skill to have. Don't be late, because people get upset. Um, I, I wanted to do well. I didn't do great. Um, I think I got distracted a lot. Um, but I tried, you know. I think I left school with okay, uh, whatever they're called, uh, GCSEs and A-levels. Um, and then I got 2-1 at uni, so I did all right, but you know, I could have could have done better, but I just, yeah, got distracted at school a lot, I think. Um, but I wanted to learn, but you also want to have a social life and do all the other stuff, so I think, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't a great student, but I wanted to be, so it was good. <laughs> at uni I did um, advertising because I couldn't decide exactly what I wanted to do after. I like had so many things. When I left school, I wanted to be a physiotherapist. Then I wanted to be an interior designer. I'd always wanted to work in music, but like I said, I didn't play anything. So I was like, that's a write off. Then I wanted to um, be a photographer. So at college, I did like photography, media studies textiles or graphics and then I couldn't decide which one I wanted to do so I was like I'll do advertising at uni because it's like a combination of everything um, and my course was really like coursework based so it was a lot of design and like thinking of copy and um, doing a lot of that stuff rather than a kind of hard written course so yeah I had wanted to do a lot of things um, in my life and I don't think that's a bad thing or it's not normal I mean it's normal to not know what what you're wanting to do and kind of like when you don't have the information it's hard because like I wanted you know had all these ideas but no one's telling me well this one is good because you can do this or here's the information about this role and this is what like you, you just kind of dream in your head you want to do this this and this but you don't know anything about it, so it's good to have someone that can tell you and give you that information and, yeah, help you sort of navigate your way into where you are now. So, um, I interact with um, people that work at venues, so venue managers, um, technicians, um, lighting people and box office staff, um, production teams, festival managers, agents, so um, the agent is who looks after the band and gets the band the job, who work with the band, um, other promoters, because we often co-promote shows um, with other promoters, so if we work closely with them, we've got marketing people, ticketing people, um, who else, managers, band managers, um, PR, press people, there's like quite a lot of connections that we have to work with, um, so yeah, it's, there's a lot of relationships to be built. Areas for growth within my role, um, I started off as an assistant promoter, so assisting the more senior promoters in their shows and now I've started to put on my own smaller shows to build up my role as a promoter so from there you would yeah just keep building within the same role of promoter but you you want to find a band from the start who's going to grow big and then you can then you pick up bigger acts along the way and yeah that's kind of how you would grow within in my particular role. If you know you want to do something and you're passionate about it, then you should just go for it. And, um, you know, everything takes a long time to build, you know, relationships, experience. Um, but don't give up, even if you feel like you're not getting anywhere. You are. You just need to keep, keep going at it. And, um, you know, different opportunities will present themselves along the way. Um, even though it's hard to see at the beginning, 
um, but you know, just get stuck in. Um, do as much as you can to build up your relationships and your experience, and yeah, I think then then things will start to snowball and and you'll get to where you want to be. But don't give up. <laughs>